now the gamma is or minus theta t to the power of minus k. We know that the first moment, first non-centered moment, is the derivative of this with respect to t with t evaluated at t equal to zero. All right. Now, first then derivative of this function. We're going to use differentiate with respect to t, so we're using the chain rule. So k one minus. So bring that down. Write this whole thing. Take one off the power and differentiate inside the bracket there. Respect to t. That's this. You just tidy this up a bit. The minuses cancel. That one and that one. Just bring this theta over to the side, just to kind of make it look not prettier. Minus. Then I could do this. All right. Therefore. expected value, I better do this again, therefore the expected value of x which is this, is this thing evaluated at t is 0, so, oh, I forgot the t there, okay well if that is 0, if t is 0 that whole thing is uh, 1 minus 0, 1 to the power of anything is, uh, to a finite number is going to be 1, so you just simply got k theta, done, that's the mean of a gamma. Next, the variance. Well, we know that the variance of a random variable is the second moment minus the first moment all squared. So what we want is a second moment now because we've got this guy here, first moment. Second moment is just the second derivative of the MGF evaluated at t is zero. So we just take this guy and differentiate again. Now m double dash just, just differentiate this gamma with respect to t. So as before, it is the chain rule because once I differentiated, there's still only the t within here. That's just a constant. So let's do that. This comes down. So we've got a minus k plus one times that lot, and then we subtract one off the power. And then we differentiate the inside of the respect to t. So let's see times minus theta. Uh, well, do we have to tidy it up? Well, if we wanted to calculate third powers and so on, uh, third moments and so on, we'd want to do it. But no, I just want the second moment and stop. So I can just set t to zero in this expression. T to zero. Well, the only thing that involves t is in here, so it's again that's going to be zero. So it's one minus zero to the power of something a finite number. So it's one. Um, that's a minus. And that's a minus. So they cancel. This theta is going to times with that theta has got theta squared. So it looks to me like you have got k k plus one to theta squared. All right. Now, don't stop here. This is not the variance. I know. You might kind of um, just overlook that and just think, phew, after doing all this, that must be the end. But no, uh, we want the variance. So therefore, the variance of x now, we can substitute this back into here. It's going to be k, k plus 1 theta squared minus the first moment all squared. You can see that this term is going to cancel that first term there. So what you're going to be left with is k theta squared. Done. So the answer is here and for the mean and here for the variance. And so that you're not just completely lost in all this algebra, I just want to show you, you know, why why do we bother using the MGF? Well, if we want to calculate the mean, the expected value of x without the MGF method, the and an alternative method would have been using the formula, the definition expected value of x for this, where x is continuous, you integrate over all of x, remember this, x times fx dx, substitute fx for the gamma, which is a big mess, and then you'd have to carry out this integra integration, okay, that would, would be in this, uh, another way, and you would get the answer k theta. Well, having the mgf, we can just churn out these moments quite quickly, 
um, if we have the second moment uh, do using this method you'd have to do a separate integration all right so one integration is enough without having to do two here you only have to do kind of see the integration once to get the MGF and once you've got the MGF we can churn out the moments okay and that's the reason why the MGFs are useful okay take care guys